That's right, Mila. I am the most powerful Tails character out there. There's not a single protagonist in the series that's stronger than me. And because of my dominance, I will have you. No, you are not the strongest. There is another who is better. Who could that possibly be? Oh no, it's me, baby. It's Reed Herschel. Your game is old. You are outdated. Nobody likes your game. That's not true. Demon Fang. Pff, ah! Oh, Reed, you're so magnificent. You defeated him so easily. Oh my God, I love you. Oh, you're so big. That's right, baby. Come on. Let's go and have some fun and ride off in the distance. Wee! Hey, Willie, you want to do another Tales video? What? Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, I'm sorry. Did you say anything? Nope, no, I didn't see you play with your Tales dolls again. That's what the hell I thought. Oh, hey, well, by the way, I got a limited edition for Tales of Zillia. <sighs> Me too! Oh. Hey there, everybody! Welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming. I'm William Morris, and you know, I think we just might be fans of the Tales of series. Nah. And this is Tales of Zillion. Now, this was the 13th Mothership title for the Tales of series. But the question is, was it Unlucky Number 13, or was it another successful entry? Well, there's only one way to find out, right? As always, we're the Brotherhood of Gaming.com, and these are the 10 facts about Tales of Zillia. Number 10. It was the first Tales game made exclusively for the PlayStation 3. The 13th Mothership title for the Tales series, Tales of Zillia, would first begin development back in 2010, right after Tales of Hearts was completed. It was confirmed by Namco Bandai that the PlayStation 3 would be receiving two new Tales games. Well, one was not so new, as it was just Tales of Graces F the enhanced version of the Nintendo Wii's Tales of Graces. But the other was the brand new Tales of Zillia. This would make it the first wholly original Tales title to appear on the console. It was Weekly Jump that revealed that the game would hit Japan store shelves in 2011 and would contain many familiar faces in its staff, from Matoi Sokoroba, Asane Inoki, Naote Maidera, and Hideo Baba. The official Tales Twitter account would then announce in March of 2012 that Tales of Zillia would get a Western localization. Hallelujah! Under the supervision of North American producer Ted Sung, the English dubbing would be completed and the game was released to these territories in August 2013. Number 9. It uses the double raid linear motion battle system. To stand out from the crowd, Tales of Zillia would introduce its take on the LMBS called the Double Raid Linear Motion Battle System. With this, the characters on the screen are able to chain together attacks and TP arts as well. This is thanks to the Assault Counterpoints. They can also receive an individually modeled special attack that is related to their own personal history and battle style. This adds more uniqueness to the battling. Another one is the brand new Link System. This can give the characters the ability to attack together. The Link system can let characters utilize powerful dual character Link to Arts, with one in the role of the leader and the other acting as the partner. The partner can use their own skills to assist the leader during the attack, like being Robin to the other one's Batman. The battle system can let you replace the active party with reserved members while in conflict, and to top it all off, both characters can share the benefits of the overlimit once it has been received. Zillia most definitely brings something fresh and new to the table. Number 8. The leveling system was altered for this game. Leveling up in the Tales series goes together like corruption and politics, but with Zillia, the system got altered into something new for the franchise. Instead of the usual leveling up systems of the past, here we have more of a grid system that uses grade points. Instead of just passively leveling up once you reach a certain amount of experience, here, when you level up, you have to go to the grid and spend points on which parts to level up. 
This gives the player more control and more engagement in the leveling up process. By selecting the nodes and unlocking them, you can unleash new abilities for your characters. Now, at first glance, it looks like a system that is very similar to uh, Final Fantasy X's Sphere Grid, but it is a bit different. The way Zillia sets up the grid system is that it feels more rewarding when your character increases. While Final Fantasy X is more gradual with its leveling up system, Tales of Zillia is more like, yeah, I'm leveling up, bitches! <clears throat> so yeah, overall, this makes the leveling up more interactive and, frankly, more fun. Number seven. The game's world's cultures are based on Asian culture. The Tales series has always taken many influences from real-world cultures, and that is nothing new here when it comes to Tales of Zillia. But one slight difference is that this game seems to take more of its influences from Asian culture. In many other Tales games like Eternia, Fantasia, and Graces for example, it always felt like the main focus of their cultures was European. But that was not the case here. Some good examples include Gaius' Palace. His place seems to draw heavily from both Japanese and Chinese architecture. Another good example is the village of Hamel, as this place seems to be very similar to the structures you would find in Southeast Asia. A major antagonist in the game, Jiao, the immovable, also seems to reflect Asian culture with his attire. I guess it would make sense for a JRPG to rely on influences from its regions. You just don't really see that very often in Tales games. Number six, a Korean publisher posted spoilers before the game's release. Spoilers are something that fans of a lot of games try their best to avoid, especially when you're fans of something like the Tale series. Or Kingdom Hearts. Shoot, man, remember when Japan was getting Kingdom Hearts 3 five days early before the rest of the world? Oh man, we lost a lot of good people in that week. I can still see the bodies. I mean, to have the weight potentially ruined by these leaks would just really suck, you know? What do you mean, Darth Vader's Luke's father? In September of 2011, Tales fans had to be careful when digging into the World Wide Web, as in-depth details about the game's story were leaked out. This was done just ahead of the game's September 8 release. After some investigation, Namco Bandai released a statement about the issue. It turns out that the responsible party was a major Korean publisher who would be publishing the guide to the game. Portions of this guide were leaked out to the internet for all to see. There was also a report of the scenario book bonus item that would be included in the Korean version, which was also leaked. However, this would be debunked by Namco Bandai. Number 5. Matsumi Inomata and Kozoki Fujishima both designed the characters. Up to this point, the character design duties for the Tales series have been swapped by Kozuko Fujishima and Matsumi Inomata. But for Tales of Zillia, the game had the honor of having both these great artists working on it at the same time. Deciding to use the best of both worlds, both artists alternated on the characters in the game. Fujishima created Jude Mathis and designed him to be at first timid and meek, and then mature at the end of the adventure. Inomata was called upon to design Milia. The reason is why because she could create cool women. Sounds good to me. She states that the character's hair was the most challenging part, and had to be redesigned several times during development. In December of that year, an illustration book entitled Tale of Zillia Illustration Matsumi Inomata Cross Kasuku Fujishima's character work was released. Just rolls right out the tongue. This showcased the works of both these two extremely talented artists and their creations. The Tales series is very lucky to have both of them working on their games, that's for sure. Number 4. Its theme song, Progress, was performed by Ayumi Hamasaki. For the main theme song of this game, Namco Bandai went to artist Ayumi Hamasaki to perform the song Progress. The song was originally one of the promotional tracks from her EP5. In 2007, Hamasaki had started collaborating with fellow musician Yuta Nakano, and the two would work on several projects. In May 2011, she was brought on to write this song, but she was a bit of an outside-the-box choice. She did not often write songs for, well, video games. Well, with the exception of Onimusha Donna Dreams. But she tackled it head-on, with words written by her and an arrangement handled by Yuta Nakano. The song was met with great praise from critics, and they agreed that its dramatic qualities fit well with the story of Tales of Zelia. 
She would also perform the song for a music video and live at several big concerts all over Japan. Number three, Millia Maxwell almost had no feminine feelings. Millia Maxwell is one of the two main protagonists for Tales of Zillia, again another series first, which truly makes her the first main female protagonist of the series, no matter what revolutionary history likes to say. Millia was created as the incarnation of Maxwell, the Lord of the Spirits, which was a character used in previous games as well. She holds the duty to protect the world and all creatures within it. At first, she relies solely on her greater spirits around her as she uses them for guidance as well as in her fighting style. On the contrary, she sees humans as an annoyance, just children she must protect, but she would grow to have a greater appreciation for them throughout the adventure, especially through Jude. Because she was so far removed from human beings, she was originally pushed by the development team that Milia would be completely devoid of any feminine feelings. But it was the women's staff of the team that came to her aid and overruled their decision. Thus, Milia still maintains her female qualities. Number two, it's one of the most successful entries in the series. By the time Tales of Zillia was released, it became the most pre-ordered game in the history of the entire series and would go on to sell over half a million copies in its first week. With its blistering success right out of the gate, the game received the PlayStation 3 the best label in 2014. Not only did the game sell well in Japan, but also in North America as well. All this despite reviews from critics being somewhat mixed. The battle system was praised, but the map designs were called lifeless and bland. At the new Type Anime Awards, the game won for Best Game Opening Animation, and the English version was nominated for a Satellite Award in 2013. Cool, huh? I don't even know what that is! Mila would become one of the most popular characters in the Tales of series. Well, according to fan polls. While it has both its fans and detractors, it is hard to argue with success. And it had so much of it that, guess what? It got a sequel. But more on that one next time. It was also, as it turned out, to be a nice curtain call. And number one, it was the last game developed under the Namco Tales Studio banner. Tales of Zillia would mark the end of an era for the Tales series, as this would be the last game that was released by Namco Tales Studio. When it started off as Wolf Team, the year was 1986, and it would go defunct in 2011. That was the end of a 25 year history. In November of 2011, Namco Bandai Games announced that they would dissolve the studio, but no reason was given why. A few months later, the 80-person team that made up the studio would join Bandai Namco Studios. They would continue to make Tales games, but just no longer be their own entity, as they were merged with Bandai Namco Entertainment. While the Tales games would live on, thanks in large part to Zillia's success, it was still sad to see the studio come to an end. It was a big part of gaming history and hopefully gamers will appreciate the studio's contributions to the JRPG scene. And that's our list. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Well guys, there might be some changes going on soon. I mean, things don't last forever. Scenes might look different, things might be changing, but one thing's for sure. Even though there will be definite changes in the near future, We'll always be the brother of gaming, and we will keep on gaming, and you all should do the same. And you know how you can do that? See down below, assuming you don't have ad blocker, you can check out the Teespring store and buy some merchandise to help support us and all that good stuff. Be sure to share our videos around, keep up the good work, keep doing what you're doing, believe in yourself, but not so much that horrible thing that's happened, and we will see you next time. Hey there, everyone. Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters. Links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.